Okay, hi Year 12, I'm just going to talk you through um, some of the work that you're going to be doing today and over Easter. Um, this is the question that we're going to be looking at. You're going to be recasting um, a scene from Myrtle's point of view and you're going to be focusing on Myrtle's feelings about the situation she's currently in. So that's the situation with um, her husband and George Wilson and having an affair with Tom and how she feels about where she lives and herself. And then also Myrtle's feelings about Tom. Um, so the extract that you need to look at for that is, now I'll have a different copy of the book to you, so you'll have to find it. It's in um, chapter two. Um, and my copy of the book is this one. So I don't think you'll have the same copy of that, but it begins from um, when they arrive at George and Myrtle's house uh, garage. And it says the interior was prosperous and bare that bit there um, and I would read down to the bit where we're talking about the town tattle um, and moving picture magazine that bit there just the end of that paragraph it's slightly longer than perhaps you would get in a real exam but it gives you some really rich description of Myrtle that might help you when you come to doing your writing so I just wanted to go through some of my notes on this little bit just so um, I know you've been making notes but just so you've got some clarity about the kind of things I'd expect you to be picking up on and I certainly won't be picking up on all of them. Um, the, the garage where Myrtle and George live is um, this is all obviously described by Nick's point of view so this is a bias narrative perspective and it's really important that you really understand that but still he describes, uh, he says, it occurred to me that this shadow of a garage must be blind, must be a blind and that sumptuous and romantic apartments were concealed overhead. So the idea that this garage is a shadow suggests that it's not what it, it, it used to be, that it's run down. Um, all the language used, the semantics used to describe the garage and everything about it will be lots of greys and muted colours and everything is going to look dust ridden just because um, of the surroundings therein. So everything is about it being run down and in ruin. Um, and Nick is very surprised by that and thinks that there must be some luxury somewhere else. So again, it shows the opposition of the, the class system. Um, when describing George, this is Myrtle's husband, um, he was a blonde, spiritless man, anemic and faintly handsome. Um, so the adjective anemic here, I would focus on the fact that he looks really pale. Um, everything about him is light in colour. So we've got the fact that he's blonde, um, the fact that he's anemic looking. Um, and that continues as we go through. There's lots of description of him being very pale. Um, da, 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 the interchange between Tom and Wilson um, is interesting. We see the dynamic of Tom being uh, having lots and lots of power um, and Wilson seeming seemingly weak by the, the adverbs and convincingly is not being particularly frank or particularly honest with what he thinks. Um, and then we have the entrance of Myrtle. So Myrtle comes in and uh, I heard footsteps on the on a stairs. And in a moment, the thickish figure of a woman blocked out the light from the office door. And that's reminiscent for me of, uh, it reminds me of um, language that I've seen elsewhere in other texts as well. And blocking out the light suggests that she is, you know, blocking out the hope that she's an ominous character, that she's going to cause trouble in the future. So you can see that as symbolic and metaphorical of her, her, char her character. What's interesting is her description. She was in the middle 30s and faintly stout. But she carried her flesh sensuously, as some women can. So um, she seems, uh, so even though she is large, she seems um, very sexy to him. Her face, above a spotted dress of dark blue crepe de chine, contained no facet or gleam of beauty. So he doesn't see her as beautiful. This is opinionative all the way through. This is the interesting bit, though, that I wanted you to focus on, the, what she's wearing, a spotted dress of dark blue crepe de chine. This would have been quite cheap material and probably make quite a loud noise as she moved, a sort of crepe material. Um, and obviously we know that Myrtle likes the finer things in life. So it's almost as if she's trying to look glamorous, but at a lower cost in this dress here. Um, 
slowly and walking through her husband as if he were a ghost shook hands with Tom so as you can see the the narrative perspective from Nick from an outsider is that she's completely oblivious to her own husband being there and just completely ignores him so perhaps that's something that you might want to pick up on um da, da, da. what else did i want to tell you about um to make sure that you've got it um yes so myrtle's language and tom's language mirror one another they both speak with in imperatives when they're speaking to george so again that makes him powerless she is um very dominating and she uses very similar language to tom that's something that perhaps you could pick up on and the other thing that I wanted to, um, so she changes her dress, which is why that um, crepe dress is very significant. She changes her dress when they go um, when they go to town, and she changes it to a brown um, her dress to a brown figured muslin, which stretched tight over her rather wide hips. As Tom helped her to the platform in New York, at the newsstand she brought a copy of Town Tattle and a move a moving picture magazine. Town Tattle is like a would be a gossip magazine and that's what she's interested in that's what she's bought and a moving picture magazine these are all aspirational magazines so they're all kind of women that she would aspire to be wealthy um uh, well known admired um it really shows what she's aspiring to um the material that she's now changed to muslin muslin would be a much more expensive light material nothing so heavy um again that's quite significant in the fact that she's moved to this new world now in new york where everything is more finery her the, the adverbs again to describe her suggest that she's turning sharply everything about her is quite um up front and aggressive just like tom so that's a, a brief overview of the bit that you've got to read. Obviously, you'll read it in much more detail as you go through and think about how you would want to present the scene. The bit I'm really interested in you looking at is the bit where George, uh, where Tom arrives and she enters the scene. So if I were you, I personally would set my piece of writing ahead of this so perhaps she might hear something downstairs she might be getting ready and she might hear um tom's entrance be expecting him be surprised to see him be happy to see him um and it would be interesting to to see what she was doing what she how long she'd linger allowing george and tom to talk whether she knew about it or not so i think that's a nice place to start your piece of writing and then her entrance and then a, a really a, a description of um, from her point of view, Tom in this scene and really um, if she does acknowledge George or not, if she is aware that she is leaving him out or if she's just completely oblivious to him. So you don't need to write rewrite the whole scene just a little bit of it okay um because we're trying to make it original think about what she's doing ahead of her arrival into this scene and write that too because that would make yours um slightly different um if you are having her in her bedroom or um getting ready i remember some of my year 13s last year they did um a piece someone did a piece where they really described the um the bedroom and the dressing table and everything was as it as uh, using lots of adjectives to make things sound glamorous but actually were just a facade so instead of having um diamonds for example so they she had Swarovski crystals um the mirror was the the paint was peeling around the 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 edge of the the mirror the gold mirror so they use lots of luxurious colors but everything was slightly crumbling about it um so you can really think about that as you are doing it so what i would like you to do is over the easter holidays is that i want you for today i want you to plan this piece of recreative in exactly the same way that you did last time i want you to then as we go through to easter holidays i want you to write the recreative piece itself remembering that that's about 300 words um, thinking about the feedback from last time write the commentary making sure you're following the commentary plan that i gave you 
But then the other interesting thing I want you to do is I want you to then rewrite the beginning of your recreative that you're going to write today in a different narrative style. So I need to talk to you a little bit about narrative styles in a moment. So first thing you need to do is plan this recreative piece. Remember that I want you to do um, four quotations, ideally from the base text, um, your terminology and inferences in relation to the base text, how you're going to change that, adapt it, use it, develop it, and then terminology and inferences for your own piece of writing as well. And that will help. So before you do that, though, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about narrative perspectives and narrative style. So in your knowledge organiser, uh, your, your AA1 Bible, sorry, um, you have a list of different narrative styles um, that you will come across as we go through the course. And some of them are uh, in relation to the Paris Anthology, some of them in relation to um, the text that you're studying with me. So Gatsby at the moment is written as a homodiagetic narrative. It's a first person narrator where the narrator is usually a character. In this case, it's Nick. It's the same as in Handmaid's Tale for Offred, but that is our narrative perspective. So when I'm writing my commentary, or if I was you and I was writing a commentary, that's one of the first first things I would think about really is that this uh, Nick's narration is a homodiagetic narrative. Uh, and because it's from that character's point of view, it is a biased perspective and you want to change that narrative perspective. That might be that you're also writing a homodiagetic narrative, but from a different character's point of view. But you need to make that really clear. Um, there are other types of narrative that we will work through. Um, another one that you're familiar with is the external heterodigetic narrative. That's a third person narrative where the narrator is outside of the events. You'll see that in lots of stories um, that you've read before, where they would just have um, a narrator to the story and then the, the, there's no bias to a particular character. They are just writing about it and then different characters come in. Um, the other one I want us to work on, though, is this one, internal heterodigetic narrative. This is a third person narrative where the narrator filters their account through the consciousness of a particular character. So I'll show you an example of that in a moment. But that means that you would write a third per person narrative, but you would understand the inner feelings of that character. So if I was to write this from what I've been doing now, say, for example, my internal heterodigetic narrative would be something like this. Um, Mrs. Nicholas sat at her desk today um, feeling like she wished she could see the students in her class. She missed teaching them. She missed being able to chat and have a giggle and know if they under really understood something. Mrs. Nicholas got up from her desk and went downstairs and got herself her fifth coffee of the day. Um, oh, she shouted, she sighed. We've run out of milk. What am I to do now? OK, so it'd be like that. There'd be um, some third person, as in Mrs. Nicholas did this, um, but you'd understand how I felt. So Mrs. Nicholas missed the students she wished missed talking to them. And, but there also might be some dialogue as well. So, oh, I've run out of milk, um, Miss Nicholas said, and she did that. So that's an internal heterodidactic narrative. Um, and that's how they differ. So the piece that you're going to write today, I would suggest that you write as a first person narrator as Myrtle, just as we um, have been doing. But after you have done that and after you've written the commentary, I would like you to attempt to write a bit of that recreative and adapt that recreative into an internal heterodidactic narrative. Um, so let me see if I can just find you a little passage about it. I did have one earlier. Let me just see. Bear with me one moment. I'm sure I have. Uh, it's always the way I should have left it open. I think I highlighted it on a page. Ah, 
ways that you can ever find it. Just bear with me one second, guys. Definitely not that bit. Um, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Wouldn't be me, would it, if I didn't get it all a bit confuddled? Ah, here we go. So let me put this into the visualise. This is from a textbook. This is an example of an internal heterodiagnostic narrative. A bit like what I've just said to you. At 7 pm, Emma takes one last look in the mirror to ensure it doesn't seem as if she had made any kind of effort. The mirror leans precariously against the wall and she knows that it is for shortening Hall of Mirrors effect but even so she clicks her tongue at her lips the short legs below her denim skirt it's too warm for it's too warm for what it's too warm for tights <laughs> but she can't bear the sight of her red scuff knees so he's wearing them anyway that's from uh, david nichols one day it's a good book though, if you haven't read it i recommend it i really enjoyed it it's a really quick easy read um uh, a bit heart-wrenching though i do recommend that book if you want something to read over easter um so that's really what i would like you to do if you obviously if you have any questions about it you can just get in touch with me um but this is these are your tasks over the easter holidays and for today plan that recreative which is a recast of this scene from myrtle's point of view um, remembering to focus on myrtle's feelings about her current situation and myrtle's feelings about tom Remember to write this as, um, well, idea, you could write it either way around, but either one of those uh, narrative perspectives, and whichever one you don't do first, I would like you to rewrite it uh, in a different narrative style. When you are writing the commentary, make it really clear which narrative style you have written in and which narrative style um, Fitzgerald wrote in um, with Nick as the, um, as the narrator. Okay. Um, best of luck with that and again even over the easter holidays if you have any questions <laughs> sorry florence has just come in flopsy um if you have any questions then please please ask okay then bye now say goodbye to everyone florence bye bye <laughs> best of luck guys